hello hello happy what is this friday i just know i have a final exam on monday <clears throat> excuse me i am driving off uh as many of you know i am a republican or I lean Republican anyway. I vote Republican. Every now and again, I'll vote for a Democrat because I'm really no party affiliation. Have been ever since I moved to Los Angeles about eight, nine years ago. Uh, wait, I am trying to wait for someone to let me in so I can make this left turn. But uh, Charlie Kirk was just at a school, at a college recently, speaking about transgender rights. The one thing, I, first off, I want to qualify myself uh, because a lot of people let's be honest when they hear a black voice they don't believe that i have some of the same experiences that they do but in fact i do i was partly raised by southern baptists i said this many a times church morning noon and night three to four times a week um from ages 13 to 18 my parents met at the same Southern Baptist Church. And I spent years six and seven there. We, My childhood was spent basically leaving that church and coming back. Leaving that church and coming back. Because my parents were dealing with ridicule from the black community. Um, and trying to reconcile that with what they know the Lord told them to do, which is to stay at that church, come hell or high water. You're supposed to be at that church for a reason. And so anyway, Charlie Kirk, you know, was at this meeting at a college talking about transgender rights with TPUSA um, and one leftist young lady sweet young lady you can tell that she has a heart for people in general she said uh, I want to ask you a question Charlie but first I want to recognize that we are on the lands of such and such indigenous group that tells me that she has a heart for people and she's not of the type that okay white people we took this land it's ours shut up and dribble if we could get some white republicans to understand that just because the land was stolen, that doesn't mean that spiritually you have the right to say shut up and dribble when somebody complains. That distracts the insensitivity, the racial insensitivity distracts from the Republican message. He went on, Charlie Clark, Charlie Kirk went on to explain, um, you know, why her historical uh, claims about, you know, ancient Native Americans and transgenderism experienced in antiquity, why it is not relevant to today. And it was such a good message, but guess what? In the eyes of probably 50% of the American public, because pretty much 50% are 
are Democrat leaning and 50% are Republican leaning. You can see that time and time again within the last three or four presidential elections. The way he acted and the way many Republicans act when issues of race are brought up, you might have a good message and nobody's going to listen to it. I grew up in a Southern Baptist church. We, one of the largest Southern Baptist churches in the Southeast, uh, at one point it used to be. And at one point, it probably was the largest Southern Baptist church in the Southeast. Now, since the pandemic, you know, not so much. And, you know, millions of people have been leaving the Southern Baptist church in general, um, nationally. But, um... We, I know for a good eight, nine years, from what I've been told a lot longer for decades, but I know that the eight, nine years that I, you know, was at my church, the descendants of the enslaved who attend the black church on the same street, but about a half a mile away, and the white people in my mega church um, used to have a, a reunion concert at the white mega church every year to commemorate hey, we are family, we started a church together. Um, you know, it was basically the enslaved and the descendants of the enslaver literally used to attend church together and broke off in like the early 1900s to form two separate churches and every year I don't know if they still do it but I know for decades they did this service to say hey we acknowledge that we were a part white people we were part of the slavery issues in this area and then we black people, we acknowledge the history as well, but this is like a truce. It, it, it was like a way of apologizing, but celebrating our shared history at the same time. It was done once a year. The white people explain, you know, the white people, the white parents explained the role that our mega church had in slavery. Let's just be honest. And they explained it to their children. It was once a year. The white parents nor the black parents dwelt on it. It was just something that happened. They explained it to us. And then we went back to celebrating God. God honors the acknowledgement. God honors when my white mega church goes into the community. Not only witness. But donate to low income communities. Um, are some of the politicians that help low income communities. They give back as much as they can because they understand how my white mega church started some of the inequality in one of the top you know in one of the major cities in the United States. So this is their way of giving back. They have politicians that, that attend the church. Um, feeding the homeless. My white mega church, and it is a white mega church, they do a lot. And, you know, they don't dwell on slavery. They don't dwell on, oh, I can't believe my ancestors did this or that. They just give of themselves. Um... And, and God, that's what I'm saying. In my quiet times, I know with, with the Lord. At first, I was debating it like, Lord, okay, well, technically, scholarship money to black women, housing for black people, discounted housing for black people, technically, the reparations 
have already been given. Technically, the reparations, you talk about $17 billion, the black community has already received that from the American government, free of charge, don't have to return it. They, We've already received those $17 billion three times over. But you know what the Lord told me when I told him, I, I said, wait a minute, we've already received that. We don't, you know, we've already received that, just not in name. And he told me that it doesn't matter. Basically, he kept pointing out verses to me. It doesn't matter. It needs to say reparations in name. You know, it, there needs to be some type of apology at minimum. And it needs to have reparations in the name. Now, I don't know how far I'm still new to this revelation the Lord is showing me. I don't know how far that's supposed to be. What type of checks. You already have uh, city governments where the families have uh, lived in the same city, major city in America for generations. And some of these uh, mid-sized major cities have already start started giving reparations to a handful of black people and it's not even in the six figures it's not even in the top five figures it's usually under forty thousand dollars but it's something to say we acknowledge what happened to you we apologize um and yes i understand that slavery was all over the world we have the Armenian genocide. We have the Kardashian family getting online year after year saying, please America, recognize the Armenian genocide. I think last year or the year before, the U.S. legally recognized the Armenian genocide. Now, trying to get Turkey to acknowledge it is this whole big feat. They don't want to acknowledge it. So the Armenians march in Los Angeles every year. And, you know, they have these advocacy groups that travel to Turkey, I believe, um, to just get someone to acknowledge the wrongs that were done to them. So that socially and economically, financially, they can go about this world in a different manner. People... It, it changes up the spiritual atmosphere. Okay, you may or may not give me reparations for my family's pain and suffering. But more people will learn about my story. They will understand the history behind my story. They will say, okay, she's not that bad. I can do business with her. It clears up the spiritual air. This nation is being held in bondage. And you have a people group in this country, a lot of white people, who know some of the dead bones in the, in the closet of this, you know, nation. A lot of your grandparents have not told you the entire truth. How you have half cousins on different sides, half black cousins, not half black cousins, but you have, you have, you know, black cousins even if you're like fourth down the line on opposite sides of a major city a lot of your white grandparents died but you see you end up noticing it in your ancestry results a lot of your grandparents died not telling you the truth but we knew all along so you end up like charlie clerk kirk getting on these stages looking like a fool you like you really don't know the depths of American history because your grand grandparents did not want to tell you, and they scared our grandmothers. They threatened our grandmothers from from telling even us. Still to this day, I can't get it out of one of my parents. He or she may have slipped up and told me why one of my relatives was biracial, and then tried to take it back. But the cat's out of the bag. It's too late. You have people living today that are still afraid that somehow, you know, something is going to happen to us if the truth gets out. And it's not. I can already see in my ancestry DNA that some of what this parent may have said 
it's true. You got relatives on in the same city that are a completely different race than you. Yeah, we know it's true. Uh, reparations, if they were to be given out, it has nothing to do with the white people that may be the cousin or the niece five times removed of the slave owner or you know the great 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 grandchild of the slave owner it has nothing to do with you even though you're directly related to to that person it has something to do with the government that enabled your relative to do that the government that wrote laws saying that you can um, hit your slave for running away and can't be prosecuted. They allowed the system to keep going. No city government, I have yet to hear any city government say, oh, we're just going to give out all of these reparations and we're going to run out of money to help the people in our city. It's just not, they wouldn't do that. If they decide they have enough money, you know, city governments decide that they have enough money to even do reparations, it's going to be within the city budget. Trust me. So again, I think that the best that Charlie Kirk and these TPUSA Republicans can do so they don't get locked in the closet again, you know what I'm referring to. If another person brings up something racial, I just want to acknowledge that we are on the lands of the Wampanoag people. Lord. Knowing that Jesus himself was of color, he was never white. He was for social justice himself. He was for the poor. He was for the children, for the hungry, for the needy, for the lumper. And you have the nerve to stand up there and say to her, that it, to to dismiss her statement about standing on the lands of the Wampanoag people. There's a saying out here today, basically that if Jesus was alive, he wouldn't even fit in with a lot of Republicans. The ones... I, the ones that say that they love God because Jesus was into social justice. Say for instance he was Brandon Tatum or Candace Owens' brother. Okay, the black people in the Republican Party. Jesus is still going to say um, okay, we need to address this slavery thing. Oh, I don't want to address this. Um, we need to hear what the people have to say about the cop killings. I, I don't want to address that. To me, being a patriot and how I was raised by white Republican Southern Baptist Confederate flag waving Christians those people who you thought would be racist and thought would be far right like you today those people taught me to honor my own history as a black person remember I told you early in this video about um, the ceremony they have every year at my church um, honoring the shared history of starting a church together you know, under conspicuous circumstances of the slave owners and the slain. Those people you would deem far right and racist actually reminded me to respect my history. But this new brand of Republicanism, I didn't grow up with this. I grow I grew up with respect whoever is in office whether you agree with them or not acknowledge history 
as it was, learn from it and move on. Do not dwell on it. Work hard. Do not be mean to people for no reason. When that girl said, you know, the Wampanoag Indians, whatever she said, there was no need for you to snap back at her. For what? Jesus fed the 5,000. He healed lepers. He did that social justice type of work. There are wars in the Bible. God called, not calls, but he allowed wars to happen. And he helped people move away from wars. And then after, you know, these wars would happen, he would say, this is done because this, that, and the other. Or this group will be punished for dealing with my people in this manner, this, that, and so on and so forth. Wars and moving people off the land. That matters to God. Especially if the people were innocent. It's all throughout the Bible. That stuff actually matters to God. For you, So for you to dismiss her. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. But God's way is the only way that's going to stand. And you're just going to continue to draw people away from the Republican cause. We have to do a lot of things we don't like to do. Yet again, I'm about to study for this entire weekend. What I've been doing for the last seven years of weekends. I have not had my weekends in seven years. Longer than that, in fact. Because I'm getting a doctorate degree. And I do not regret it. We have to do a lot of things we don't want to do to bring glory to God. To elevate His message so that His message does not uh, it is not muffled. People they're going to focus on how you dismiss the Native Americans and not the Republican message. I'm studying this weekend so I can pass my final exam so I can get this degree because i got thousands of fans already. You can see I have over 500 people on this um, page. I got people on my Facebook. I got people on my Twitter. I got random people approaching me about this degree. People are rooting for me. They're looking for a young conservative black woman who's diseducated but understands the value of regular people, of people who are not like her, who pe the people who did not grow up the way that she grew that she grew up people who did not grow up in the inner city people with my diverse set of circumstances that grew up in every upper middle class lower middle class in between you name it I've done it people are looking for me they're looking for someone who can relate to pretty much every sector in America I know that I am needed So, I got to stay up. I got to study even sometimes when I don't want to. We got, all got to do things we don't want to. Your message is needed. If you don't want to be locked in closets again, can we please agree to disagree? You want babies to be saved, but you can't get over your racism for two seconds to let the Republican agenda move forward. 